nature it's something precious we lost in our fast lifestyle and never ending greed for more material things in a time when everyone talks about a healthy lifestyle do we pay any attention to what we eat and feed our kids the huge amount of scientific research done and its conclusions prove that what we eat every day is poison to the core we find medicine shops and hotels side by side the bigger question in people's minds is to whether eat first followed by medicines or to take the medicines first and then eat later agricultural plants concentrating on short term gains without a vision of the future a so called green revolution made with expensive and harmful foreign pesticides the result is poison in our blood how did we commit such grave blunders what is the solution to this man made problem how do we protect nature and hence protect our future with a healthy life how did artificial fertilizers find their way into indian farms after second world war the developed countries came for the help for the poor countries the companies that were selling the motors and the oil they took charge of helping india like ford motor company and rockefeller oil company came to develop agriculture in india so they brought fertilizer chemical fertilizer they told if more chemical fertilizer are applied in agriculture we will be getting more yield and starvation can be removed that is how chemical fertilizers came to india what are the implications on using artificial fertilizers in the beginning our traditional paddy varieties did not respond well for chemical application when you apply more chemical fertilizer they larger so the companies told indian scientists we should grow dwarf varieties they introduced the dwarf variety from japan and they found it responding more for chemical fertilizer so they introduced the dwarf varieties from irri philippines first thing we have lost the paddy straw when the straw is removed from the cultivation the cattle are removed they have gone for slaughter house the trouble started with that with the absence of organic manure we have lost the soil fertility with the application of more chemical pesticides our food have been contaminated with the pesticide poisons our people are falling in illness and the consumers are not well off with the feed with the use of chemical fertilizers machines pesticides and weedicides our rural population have lost the employment potential and the whole population have become pauper what is the response from the scientist community and the government the so called scientists are always telling that a green revolution was a success in india but a green revolution was not a science it was a trade it was a commerce after second world war the western countries manufactured more chemical fertilizers they wanted market for their chemical products that is why they introduced the green revolution otherwise a green revolution is not a science but the government scientists don't want to accept the truth if they accept the truth they they don't have a ground to stand that's why they are telling this a false lies the one fact is there the government is writing off the all the loans given to the people that means they have not benefited by this chemical application and green revolution practices this is the reality but the scientists don't accept that what is the solution for this for the last 15000 years agriculture is going on in india 
the soil fertility was not lost the village prosperity was not lost only during the last 40 years this uh, rural situation has changed the whole rural environment is deprived of water potential seed potential cattle potential and working population so we have to go back to our traditional practices that is the only way to save our country because still 65000 percent of population that is a 65 crores of people are living in the rural areas they can't be pushed out into the ocean they want to survive so the self reliance depends upon the local employment and application of local inputs what is organic farming for 100 crores of years the nature has developed without the assistance of human beings as a climax of the growth only human beings have developed so nature has its own character and ability to recover itself and we have to live in harmony with nature in india we have plenty of sunlight all the 12 months we can cultivate the land but we should see the soil fertility is not lost so we should add more organic matter into the soil in the way of crop rotation or mixer cropping or returning the by products from the crop like banana stalks or sugarcane waste or paddy straw or the cattle manure into the soil so that the nature can help a human being in the way of food security for that we need biodiversity the main danger of this green revolution is monoculture we should switch over to the polyculture and agriculture is location specific we should not cultivate all the crops everywhere wherever the millets are possible they should be grown because they need only 10% of the water that is required for paddy. So the millet crops can be grown with a minimum seeds and they will provide all nutrients for the human people, population. We have to switch over to the traditional way of cultivation. How can pests be controlled through organic farming? During the Green Revolution, uh, they have uh, advocated a, a wrong thing, a wrong practice and a wrong principle. Uh, all along for the last 10,000 years people were not taking any step to kill the insects. Killing the insect is not the proper answer for protecting the crop because in the nature there are a lot of predators. There are predator insects, there are predator birds. They will eat the insects and will maintain their balance. So killing the insect is not our a responsibility in in some time when we are when the season is not favorable we have to control the insects by some other means for that we are using herbal pesticide actually it is not pesticide it is a pest repellent it is it is driving away the insects that is coming to our field to lay the eggs for that all the leaves that are not eaten by cattle or goat are soaked in cattle urine for 10 days then the pest repellent is ready. We are adding 10 times water to the solution and spraying on the crop. It is keeping the plant free from pest. How aware are our farmers about organic farming? In all the districts, this organic farming training have, have taken place. Uh, then and there, almost some 10,000 farmers are following this organic farming practices. Somebody is or following all the practices and uh, some farmers are still using a little uh, fertilizer but uh, completely without pesticide with organic pesticide they are following but uh, we are not satisfied with that we want to give intensive training in different places for many farmers we are not satisfied with what uh, achieved at present uh, in india agriculture is facing a crisis Already 30,000 farmers have committed suicide. Every day one farmer is committing suicide in one or other states of India. It is because 
the soil has lost its ecological balance it is not economically viable for the farmers it is not socially acceptable because it creates more unemployment and other things it is leading to soil erosion and the exploitation of the seed materials that is available in india now the scientists are saying the land is facing green revolution fatigue that is it is not at all going to produce more yield they are not able to control the pest with the chemical pesticide the show certainly one alternative path is needed that the alternative path is ecological farming that is a mixture farming that is the cattle trees and crops should be combined that is the only solution because the trees need very little work very little care after 2 or 3 years in the beginning once we are taking care later stage tree are taking care if all these trees are combined that is a tree crop and animal are combined one by product is used in other unit every weed every grass has a function to play in a farm that understanding this principle is called ecological farming it is promoted and recognized throughout the world it should be followed in india also there is no other alternative Mr. Rajaram of Mekeri village Wooty speaks about his experience with organic farming. People in the past used to live about 70 90 years because of organic farming. Now because of chemical farming with a lot of pesticides people struggle to live healthy even up to 40 50 years. They do not have any strength. An old man in those days used to easily carry a sack of rice. but now even a 25 year old man cannot lift it the soil had good fertility and power during those days of organic farming if we keep on using chemicals in our soil it will lose its power idikku mele poga poga adhe nama rasanu da and chemical potenaka in mannu sakthiye kammi ayiru mr kannan of pudu karai pudur village in gopichatti palayam speaks about his experience with organic farming I went to Satyamangalam village after hearing about people doing organic farming there. After I saw the results, I also changed over completely to organic farming from October 1999. The first time, I used a traditional rice variety from Bhavani and got good results. Soon, I even started using the traditional Indian varieties in sugar cane and turmeric. From 2000 till 2006, that is six years, I am using only organic farming. When I was doing chemical farming the soil got wasted and the expenses kept rising but the output kept dropping now my aim is to recycle locally available fertilizers only without buying anything from outside the farm at the beginning of my experiments with organic farming i had the impression that the output is low but now i get even more output from my farms than chemically cultivated farms Nature has proved time and again that when man acts against nature the result is the whole of mankind's survival is threatened let us not hesitate any further let us liberate ourselves from the clutches of companies which poison us let us return to our traditional and balanced way of agriculture let us ensure that at least our children have a fertile future Let us create a green India.